Hi, if you've got a Dyson V15 like this, and if it starts to pulse or lose suction, which should be pretty obvious because the suction on these are normally really good, uh, then it could be a case that it needs cleaning or maintaining. Uh, so what I want to do in this video is to show you how to clean and maintain the Dyson V15. Uh, and by the end of this video, you should have the full suction back. Uh, but all I'd normally do is say, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, just before we start, just give us a quick thumbs up. What I do is I talk about household appliances. I do specialise in vacuum cleaners. I've done quite a few cleaning videos like this and they've gone down really well. So just give us a quick subscribe, then we'll make a start. The first thing to note is that the area that I'm in at the moment, uh, it's been commented quite a few times on the videos, is why am I doing this in my kitchen? Uh, now it's not in my kitchen, it's in a utility area. Um, and what I am going to do is I always say, try and do this in a well ventilated area. Uh, there's nothing worse, if, especially if you suffer with things like allergies or asthma, uh, then what you want to do is make sure you are in a well ventilated area before you do this. Uh, because what I need to do is I need to go and empty the bin. And hopefully you should be quite au fait with how to empty the bin and get all the rubbish out to start with. Uh, if you're not, or if you're new to this, then you've got the red handle underneath and all you'll do is you'll push it down. Clearly I'm not going to do it at the moment because I've got some rubbish and dust in here. So I'm just going to go and empty this first of all. That's it. So now we've got all the, the rubbish out. Uh, you can see, just see in there how, yeah, it's quite dirty in there. I'll be honest, I've not used this a huge amount. Uh, when they're brand new, they do look really, really nice, uh, but they do get dirty pretty quickly. Uh, so this is uh, normally the kind of video that people like to get their vacuums nice and clean again uh, but just to start with I would normally say to just check in the the main wand or the pole here just check to make sure there's no blockages at all uh, hopefully you can see down the tube at the moment uh, you can see light at the end of the tunnel so there's no blockages or anything in here uh, but let's just pop that to one side just so I've got a little bit more space to work with now what I always say is to try and put down something on your worktop uh, I've just got a piece of cardboard here, so either get a newspaper or something just to put down. It just makes life so much easier when it comes to clearing up afterwards. Uh, in, I think this is the first video I did. Uh, I've no idea why, but I ended up emptying the, the bin onto the worktop. Uh, and then it, it was quite a mess and it was quite difficult to clear up afterwards. So just pop something down, it will just make life a lot easier for you. Now what I'll do is I'm just going to take you through some of the tools and accessories as far as the cleaning of these first. Uh, I'm not going to spend too long doing it because uh, a lot of these are quite simple to do. So this is the main drive head that comes with it. Uh, it doesn't matter which model you've got, whether it's the Animal, the Absolute, uh, the Dyson do quite a few different models now of the, the V15. Uh, but this is one of the main, the, the torque drive head that comes with it. As you can see here, there is a slot in the side uh, previously, I have used screwdrivers to open these. Uh, to be fair, the slots used to be a little bit smaller, but now they've made them a little bit wider, then it's recommended to just get a coin. Just pop that in the side, twist it a little bit. Uh, you don't need to twist it too much, and when you do, you will notice that it's just released a little bit. And you don't need the coin again at the moment. So all you need to do is just pull that out, as you can see, some of the, the rubbish is already coming out from under here, just onto my piece of cardboard. So as far as this, initially it looks pretty clean. Um, I've not really used it in an area where I've had uh, either hairy members of my family or animals, so I've not got a lot of hair around it. Uh, but all I'd recommend is just get a an old paintbrush uh, or something like this and just give it a just give it a wipe down or a brush down as, as it should be because uh, what we want to do is to get this nice and clean again I'm not going to spend too long doing this uh, and then what you'll find if you have got a lot of hair wrapped around it then just get normally a pair of scissors and just slice it across there and just try and peel that off uh, what you'll find is if you have used those for a while then it will look a lot worse than this uh, when it comes to this part, uh, again, what you what you can do after you've shaken some of the dirt out to start with is again just give it a, a brush round in here, 
just try and get the try and get the worst out. That's it. So that's got the it's got the worst out of it. Uh, and then you can still see that it could do with a, a bit of a white round inside. And this is really where thing where is it going? There we are. So this is really where things like microfiber cloths come in handy. Uh, I tend to use these quite a lot now when it comes to cleaning the the vacuums. And all you want to do is, apart from knocking the plug off, is to just get get your microfiber cloth a little bit damp. It doesn't need to be soaking wet. Uh, as you can see here, it's not it's not too wet. It's just a, a little bit damp, and all you need to do is to just give it a, a wipe out on the inside. And then once you've done that with the damp microfiber cloth, I would always recommend to have a, another microfiber cloth, just a dry one, and just give it a quick wipe over with this. Uh, I mean, at the moment on the outside, it's not too bad. Uh, to be fair, I this is pretty quick clean, uh, just to try and get the worst off it. Uh, but even just after a moment of cleaning, I know you could go into a, a lot more detail with it. Uh, but that's looking looking a lot better, a little, little bit shinier. And then when it comes to putting it back together, then all you do is you just pop the brush in that side. So just locate it at the top here and then get your coin and just keep twisting it and you'll just feel it click into place there um, and the advantage of using a coin over a screwdriver is I've not mashed up the head at all it's quite easy to do that so if you do use try and use a big screwdriver then you could damage the head and if you do uh, damage the plastic it can make it really difficult to get this apart anyway so that's the main floor head a lot cleaner uh, I'm just going to pop this over to the side because this area over here is going to start to get a bit dirtier. This was the next one to look at. This is the slim laser fluffy head. Uh, I'll be completely honest, I've not really used this one that much. Uh, but I will show you how to take it apart. Uh, I have had somebody already ask me about this. And all you need to do, so there's no coin used in, in this one. You've just got a little slot around the side there. So just pull that down and then the main fluffy head will come apart. Uh, this is really easy to keep clean. So with that, uh, all you need to do is just take that off at the end. Um, you can just give this quick rinse underwater if you want to. Uh, just give that a, a quick rinse. Just make sure it's nice and clean before you try and put it back together. That just clips back on. And with this part, you can't get this wet. So don't put this underwater. Uh, I know it, this, yeah, this is pretty clean at the moment. Uh, but again, just get the uh, either your brush or your microfiber cloth, give it a quick white round hair. And then when you're ready to put it back together, that just slots back into place like that. And then just locate that part and then that will clip back into place and then you're ready to go. So as I say, I've not really used this one a huge amount. Uh, something I will point out is when you are cleaning any of these tools, just make sure the connections are nice and clean. Uh, what you can find over time of you using them, these parts could start to um, become a little bit dirty and if they're not sealing properly, then you'll find that the suction performance can start to diminish. So that's just another tip. Uh, some of the other tools, so this is the, uh, the other hair screw tool that they provide that Dyson send with the, the V15. Uh, I must say this has gone down really well with customers. Uh, this is a great little tool if you've got hairy members of your family. So if you've got people, I won't say just ladies, so if you've got people in the house with long hair, or animals especially, then this is a really good one because the idea is it, it helps to reduce the amount of hair you get tangled around hair. So this is like a mini turbo brush. Uh, but when it comes to cleaning this, again, I've not used it a huge amount, but just to show you how to take it apart, you've got a little flap under here. And if you lift that, then this will actually come off. So it's a little bit fiddly the first couple of times you do it. That's it. 
So that just pulls off like that. Uh, with this, you just give it a give it a brush and a white round with your microfiber cloth. Again, just make sure that's nice and clean. Uh, ideally, so in an ideal world, this should look really clean and fresh like this. If it's worked it and if it's done its job properly, there shouldn't really be any hair rods around here. If there is some hair, then just get uh, normally a pair of scissors and just take it off around here. And again, just get get your microfiber cloth, give it a white round just to make sure it's nice and clean. And then to put this back together, all you need to do is you need, just need to get that, those couple of little tracks and just line those up. And then that just clips back into place. Uh, just flick the little flap, just so just flick that back up and then you're ready to go with that. So again, I've not used that huge amount, so there's not a, a lot that I need to clean with this. Uh, when it comes to a lot of the other tools, so I've just got, got a handful of the other tools. So you've got things like the uh, combination tool, uh, you've got the crevice tool as well, and also the soft dusting brush. Uh, with these, uh, I suppose you can wash them if you want to. So if they have got really filthy over the years, uh, I suppose for a lot of people, you're gonna be doing this when it's starting to get on a bit, when you've owned it for a while, uh, which is fully understandable. Uh, I will be honest, the, the V15 we've got here, I have used quite a bit. I've not used it a huge amount, especially with the tools. That's why these are nice and clean at the moment. Uh, but you know, you can wash these if you want to. Uh, it is all plastic, so that won't matter. Uh, but all I normally say is once you've cleaned these, just put them to the side and leave them for at least 24 hours. Uh, before you start to use them. So that's the, the tip on the, the tools there. But really what I need to do now is to start concentrating on the main vacuum. It could be at this stage that you go and get a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, go and have a little break. Uh, so I've just got my cup of coffee here because it's quite early in the morning here. Uh, but this is the, I suppose the next stage is to start stripping this down, the main body of the vacuum. So let's just pop the coin to the side for a moment. So what we want to do is to take the bin off first of all, and all you need to do is fully extend the bin, so, uh, the same as when you've emptied it, and you will see underneath there is a little red flap. So I'll just point that out. So there's a little red flap just underneath, press that in, and then the whole bin assembly comes off. Now this is really where you need to have the either your paper or piece of cardboard on here, because uh, you will find that there's a lot of rubbish around here. Uh, so you just want to make sure that any of this dust or debris, you don't want it all over the floor because some of these particles are quite fine. They can be quite difficult to pick up. Uh, and this is really the stage where you need to get your, your old paintbrush. Uh, let's just pop these cloths to the side for a moment because what I'm going to start to do is to start to brush all this down just to get rid of a lot of the, the dust off here. So let's just pop the bin to the side for a moment and I'll just get the, the brush and I'd really recommend holding it this way. So just make sure that any of the dust is coming off. And you will find for some reason that even though you've, you've cleaned in here, that if you tap it at the bottom, get a lot of dust coming back up at you afterwards. Now uh, this is something that is, isn't is unique on the V15. Uh, a lot of the Dyson products have done it for some time. So it's a case of um, what I have done in some of my other videos, I have taken this shroud off. Uh, you can do that. Uh, I have tried it. Uh, you, you have got a little bit more access inside here. Uh, if you wanted to do that, then you have just got some of the uh, Torx, uh, Torx little screwdrivers in here. Uh, I will double check, but I think it is a T8 that you need on here. Uh, but that's something that you can do. So if you take those off, just be really, really careful. Because uh, what you can find is it, it, it can invalidate the warranty. Uh, what I wouldn't want you to do is to start doing any of this and then it starts to invalidate the warranty because I had been contacted by Dyson before just to say that you, know, you shouldn't be taking these things apart. And to be fair, yeah, you, you shouldn't be taking these apart any more than this, uh, but I know some people insist on taking this in a shroud out. 
but what you should find if just have a look down there uh, I'm going to carry on brushing this down for a moment uh, but you should find after a, a couple of minutes of doing this uh, especially if you've got some some of the dust inside there that's, uh, that's, it's not coming out as much now but there's still a little bit to go so let's just keep, keep in, giving this a brush down uh, then once you've done that I'm just going to get rid of this rubbish here because there's a lot of dust as you can see it's quite it's quite fine particles almost looks like I, I could draw something in that some sand art or something uh, but I'm just going to get rid of this and then the next thing I'll do is to just take this filter off at the back here uh, as you can see it has got uh, a little picture of it a tap on here or a fusset if you're in America uh, now all you want to do here is just give this a quick wash uh, it doesn't take long just do it in cold water uh, again in some of my other videos I've recommended it to do it in warm water uh, but apparently cold water is all it needs so just give that a quick rinse and what you should find just while I'm doing this is that the really the only part that you should need to clean but it does depend on I suppose how dirty it is is this bottom part uh, so it's just this bit here uh, you've got the, the filter at the top here. Uh, you shouldn't really need to wash that. It's mainly this part at the bottom here that needs to be washed. Now, what I'd say, and I do say it in all my videos, make sure that this filter is completely and utterly dry before you put it back on the vacuum. Uh, what you don't want to do is to spend all the money on this, this uh, vacuum cleaner, because they're certainly not cheap, the V15, and then go and ruin it by putting this filter back on when it's wet. This is why I'd always recommend when you buy, I suppose any cordless vacuum, especially some of the Dyson, uh, is to go and buy a spare filter. I will post a link below uh, if you're not sure where to get them from or how much they are. Uh, but just go and have a look, go and buy a spare filter because what this enables you to do is to wash the filter, uh, give it a good rinse, uh, make sure it's nice and clean. And then once you've done that, then you can put this on the side, leave it for 24 or ideally 48 hours to completely dry. And then while you, while that's drying, you can go and put the other filter back on. And it's the same when you go to wash the other filter. Uh, so by having two filters, and it's the only one on here. So on this one, uh, I know they do vary across the different models. Uh, some of them have extra filters in. But on this one, the V15, and this is the absolute model, so this is one of the better ones. It's only got this filter on it, so just go and buy a spare one. Just make sure you've got one to, to hand. But essentially, once you've done that, I'm dripping all over the place at the moment because I've not got it properly dry. Uh, again, just hold it that way when you're washing it. Make sure any of the dirt and rubbish is going down and out. What you don't want to do is have it upside down because any of the dirt that you just wash through here will go back into the top part of the filter. Uh, but essentially that is pretty much done. Uh, all I'm going to do is the rubber seals around here, just make sure these are nice and clean as well. So just get your microfiber cloth, get your damp one, just give it a quick wipe around there. And that's lovely and clean now, they're around the seal. So just put that to one side and then we'll carry on with the vacuum. So what I've tried to do, I tried to do this in stages. Uh, so let's just pop the main vacuum at the back here. Now, I've brushed around the, the main part of the vacuum here, but I've not done anything else yet. Uh, the bin itself, as you can see, this is pretty filthy as well. So let's just get the uh, get the worst off. Just giving it a, a quick brush around. Uh, there's quite a lot of, of rubbish at the bottom here. So I should really have done this before I got rid of the, the rubbish off the cardboard and then once you've done that just try and get as much out of there as possible so once you've done that then what we need to do well first of all I'm going to go and get rid of this rubbish here I'm going to start working on getting it a lot cleaner I have found that over the time of doing all these videos uh, I've done quite a few cleaning videos especially on the Dyson products now uh, that the cleaner you keep the area here, it's so much easier cleaning the vacuum because there's nothing worse than having all the dust and dirt here and then going and putting your vacuum onto the dust and dirt that you've just taken out. So 
just keep this area nice and clean. So really, I suppose after we've done that, so we've got rid of a lot of the rubbish now, uh, the key is to get your damp microfiber cloth. I think I might need to give this a wash or go and get another one in a moment. And uh, to give this a white round inside. Now it shouldn't take too long. Uh, you don't need to get it wet. So you don't need to put it in water or anything like that. Uh, and then once you've done that, just give this a really good white round. So just get the seals nice and clean. Uh, you want to make sure that these rubber seals around here are, are really, really clean. Uh, if they're not clean, then you can find that the, if it's not shutting the, the lid or shutting the bin properly, then you can find that the suction can be lost purely through not cleaning the seals properly. I have found it on, on several customers' vacuums where they've not cleaned them properly, they've not maintained them at all. And it's purely because of the just that not shutting properly, uh, that it had a slight air gap in between. And that's that can stop the, the suction. So just give that a, a white round there. You don't need to spend too long doing it. So that's essentially that's quite nice and clean now. Let's pop that to the side. And I suppose the same on the main unit. Again, just use the the damp cloth. Just give it a good white round here. Uh, I've made sure that a lot of the dirt from inside has been has been taken out now. And doesn't take long to do it. Again, you've just got the, the seal at the top here, uh, and also this, just the thin seal around the middle here. Just make sure both of those are nice and clean. Just try not to miss any. Uh, also, don't worry that, I know some people comment on my white shirt that I'm wearing. Uh, don't worry, it's not a, a smart shirt. I know in some of the videos people commented why why is he wearing a shirt while doing this cleaning well don't worry i've got to got a spare one so now we've given that a good wipe over uh, just while we're on these uh, i suppose the subject to the battery uh, on each model of each generation of dyson cordless vacuums uh, i suppose they've made it easier to remove the battery uh, on this model all you do is you've got the button under here and it's just it's so easy just take the battery off uh, because some of these models you can actually change the battery between other batteries and then charge them independently uh, I know as you go up to the uh, absolute the outsize especially then you've got a separate charger uh, but yeah all you need to do is just press that button in uh, as far as the maintaining of it there's not really a lot to do here uh, personally, I'd, I'd probably have a look here, just get your dry microfiber cloth. So you definitely don't want anything wet inside here because you've got the battery contacts. So just give it a give it a white round. There's not a lot you should need to do. Uh, if you do need to replace the battery, I'd always recommend sticking with a genuine Dyson one like this. Uh, and then when it comes to popping it back on, that just clicks back into place. Uh, but basically, as far as the, the main cleaning of the body, if you have taken any of these screws out, just make sure that this goes back in place fully. Uh, you can find, again, if you don't put it back, or if you've damaged any of the, the parts here, then again, that, that probably won't be covered under the warranty. So that is really a, a warning there. Uh, but as far as the cleaning of the main unit, then we are pretty done. Uh, all you need to do is just to locate that underneath. So just make sure that's, that goes the inside of the handle. Uh, initially, when you first do it, it's a little bit awkward to find out how to do it properly. So that just sits in there. And then push that into place. And just give it a quick nudge. That's it. And then that has, that's all gone back in place nicely. So now that we've got the bin back together, that's the main part of it. Um, all you need to do is the filter, uh, again, once it's nice and dry, just pop that back on. And you just need to twist it. So you will find that there's a certain position. It just locks into place. Uh, I'll just show you that again a little bit closer. 
so when you first put it on, you will notice that there is a, a little gap around here. That's not fully on. Uh, just keep twisting it until it fully locks into place. A little bit of a tweak, and then that's fully on. Uh, you will find that if you don't if you don't have the filter in place properly, if you press the button on the back, then it's just saying that filter isn't sealed, and that's just recommending how to do that properly. So that's really good. And what you'll find is if, if I try and press the trigger when the filter isn't in place, then it won't work. So again, you have to push it on and then twist it. And then you're back to the, the main menu on here. Uh, just a little tip. I know for some of you, you just, you press the buttons and then it goes, flicks between the different options here. Uh, there are other menus that you can go into. So if you press and hold the button, and you've got other options on here. So you've got things like the language that you can change. You've got different alerts, so you can turn some of them on and on and off. Uh, particle count, put my teeth back in. So particle count, do you want it on or off? Do you want it to monitor the particles that it's picking up? You've got the option of turning it on and off. Uh, motor sensitivity, you can change the setting on that and then just to exit the menu. And to, to go into these, so if you wanted to turn the alert on or off, then just press and hold that. Uh, and then what they're saying is that your motor will pulse three times when there's the on-screen alert. And then you can just change that if you want to. So that just goes between the different options. So I want to keep that on because I think that's quite a good feature. And then to exit out of all of these menus, you just keep pressing that button until we get to the end there, and then press and hold that button. And then we're back to the start. So if you've done all this, so if you've cleaned the vacuum, if you've washed the filters properly, let them dry, if you've cleaned the bin, uh, if you've checked to make sure that there are uh, things like this, having a look to make sure there's no blockages in the wand here, uh, also, just get the main floor head again. So the main floor head, just make sure there's no blockages on the corner here. Uh, that's something I didn't mention earlier. Uh, just make sure there's nothing within the end, because you can find, because it angles, especially at that sort of angle, uh, that can be a common place for dirt to collect. So just make sure there is nothing stored in there. Uh, but what you can find is if you've done all of that, and if your vacuum is still pulsing, uh, again, you've made sure all the seals are clean because that can make a difference. Then it is really recommended to contact Dyson. Uh, all of these products do come with a two year warranty. Uh, so just give them a quick ring and hopefully they should be able to sort something out for you. But I hope you enjoyed this video on how to clean and maintain the Dyson V15. All I'd ask is please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just give us a quick thumbs up, click subscribe, if you have got any questions on the V15, uh, either in the cleaning or maintaining of it, or if you've just got any general questions on the, the model itself, because I've got uh, one or two in the showroom here that I can try and help you with, then just pop it in the comments and uh, I'll get back to you. Uh, just let me know what you thought about the video, whether you liked it, whether you didn't like it, whether I didn't cover something that you ideally wanted to know. Uh, just pop that in the comments. You know, just be brutally honest about it, because sometimes even if it's negative feedback, I can learn from it and then use it in my other videos, which I've hopefully learned on, on this one. Uh, I must say that if you have a look at the microfiber cloth here, I need to go and give that a really good wash after cleaning the vacuum. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.